Good morning, church, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church, alive and online. Welcome to all those who have joined us from near and far, be it, ac be it from across the street, or from Kentucky, or Arizona, or Oma Omaha. We are honored that you have invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Now let us know that you are here, either Facebook chat or the comment box, if you're viewing through Google Link. The Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching out to our neighbors, loving God, and caring for all. Our building may be open on a limited basis, but our mission and ministry continues and is going strong. Just a reminder, due to the continuing high COVID positivity rates in Spotsylvania County, we continue to pause our 4 p.m. in-person worship service. Now remember, this is just a temporary pause, and as soon as the positivity rates show an appreciable decline, we will resume. In the meantime, we continue to meet together for activities via Zoom. So coming up this week, following this worship service, we here we stand, the adult forum studying the social statements of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA, begins at 11.30 a.m. So join us as we continue our study of genetics, faith, and responsibility. Women's Bible study is on Wednesday at 9.30, and we're continuing with Holy Envy, Finding God in the Faith of Others by Barbara Brown Taylor. This Thursday at 7 p.m., the Micah study group continues with the book study of Love is the Way, Holding on to Hope in Troubling Times. Written by the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, be prepared for challenging discussions related to poverty, racism, selfishness, deep ideological divisions, and competing claims to speak for God as we discover the gifts we need in order to live the way of love. Several weeks ago, we sent out letters encouraging updated estimates of giving for January through June of 2021. We encourage you to return these cards by January 31st. Now, this is one way to participate in the mission and ministry of Resurrection Lutheran Church. If you would like to be included, a copy of the letter and the card can be found on our Facebook page. Feel free to print the card and return it to Resurrection Lutheran Church via the United States Post Office. Links to these and many other opportunities to join with us in mission and ministry in a meaningful way can be found in the events section of the Resurrection Lutheran Facebook page, which you can access even if you don't have a Facebook account. And if you are on Facebook, be sure to like us to get notifications of upcoming activities and ministry opportunities. Today, we light the lantern of remembrance and remember in, in memory of Albert Al Guber, a longtime member of Resurrection Lutheran Church who entered into the church triumphant on Saturday, January 16th. Per his request, there will be no memorial service. Covenant Funeral Service is handling his arrangements. We continue, to, we continue our worship series, Follow Me, with a sermon entitled, follow me. Now in Mark 1 verse 17, Jesus said to the disciples, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Fishing for people. Hmm. What image comes to mind with this phrase? You know, it's more than just capturing people and hauling them in. Following Jesus is, just, is not just about a state of being, but a call to doing with an outward focus, always looking for ways to connect and finding ways to be in meaningful relationships with all of God's beloved people. Leading us today in worship are Allie Beck, Alex Johnson, Ann and Chuck Price, and Greg Williamson. Our video production team is A.J. Beck, Robert Schul, and Jeff Slunt. And I am Reverend Heidi Moore, pastor here at Resurrection. Join us for the call to worship by singing Come to the River of Life. The words are on the screen and in the bulletin.
confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you, you search, search us and, and know us. us. You, you are, are acquainted, acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongue, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. At this time, we encourage you to text or call to extend the peace of the Lord to them. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can post a greeting as well. The peace of the Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. you. sing our gathering hymn, Come Follow Me, the Savior Spake.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and all also with you. you. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to join us for the singing and reading of Scripture. morning. This is a reading from Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. 
Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. The word of the Lord. Let us welcome the gospel in song. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. I invite our kiddos to come <clears throat> closer to the screen and welcome. I'm so glad that you are with us today. Now, you may have noticed that there is a lot of green going on here. That's because we're in the green season, which means that this is the time of growth. Now, that might sound strange <clears throat> for being in the middle of winter, but I don't know about you, but I went out into my garden yesterday, and I noticed that there were daffodils already coming up just this much. And pretty soon, the snowdrops and the crocuses will be joining their brothers uh, and sister daffodils. This is the time of growth. And you know what? I'm really looking forward that when the time that we are all back together again, just to see how much you have grown, I know that you're probably taller and your, your face may have uh, filled out a little bit. I mean, I just can't, and your hair definitely is longer. Now, you might notice some changes, too, in the adults, and I can tell you I've been kind of growing, too, but that's not, <laughs> we'll work on that later. I, like I said, this, was a, this is a time of growth, and that's why we're here today 
about Jesus and his disciples. And he's calling, their, he's calling disciples. And not only that, he's calling them into a time of growth to learn what it means to be a follower of Christ. So I invite you to into this time of growth as well, and your parents too, as we grow in the love and grace of Christ. Amen. Now I have a question to ask you. Do you get your pets Christmas gifts? Do you hang stockings for them? Or do other, others get Christmas gifts for your pets? Well, I gotta tell you, in our family, that's tradition. Hang those stockings on the mantle. Get our cats Christmas gifts. And this past Christmas, my son's girlfriend purchased a toy for our three cats called Flippity Fish. Now this is infused with catnip, and it quickly became the toy of the morning because when you touch it or move it, like a cat will bat it along, it moves and begins to flop around. And of course it's on the end of a fishing pole, which you can use to entice the cat. And it's rechargeable. All you need is a USB port. Now, as toys go and cats as well, I can tell you that there only one of our three cats seems to enjoy Flippity Fish. The other two, when Flippity Fish is brought out in typical Siamese fashion, just head the opposite way. They will not denigrate themselves by even acknowledging it it is not worth their time of day. And that brings us to our Old and New Testament reading, the Gospel readings, rather, for today, because they're both fish stories. Now, Jonah is a popular tale that always gets children's attention. It involves a reluctant prophet, a really big fish, and a vile big city. Now, most of us know the story leading up to our selection today. God tells Jonah to leave his cushy prophet gig and go tell Nineveh, a city filled with evil, smelly people, to repent or in three days be destroyed. So what does he do? He goes the other way to Tarshish, boards a boat, sails in the opposite direction of Nineveh. Well. God is not pleased and creates a terrible storm. And owning up to his cowardice, Jonah tells the crew to throw him overboard. And the seas calm, and Jonah gets eaten by a big fish about the size of a whale. Now, after three days, this big fish gets a bad case of indigestion and hacks up Jonah on the beach. And Jonah gets the point. Don't argue with God, and heads to Nineveh. Not happily, I mind you, but he goes there anyway. Now, what is this big deal about Nineveh? Well, for starters, you just did not want to go there. It was full of the wrong sort of people, ridden with crime, corruption, and of course, lacking in character. You might say it was Sin City on steroids, it's not the ideal tourist destina destination, and it certainly was not worth the time of day to Jonah. Avoid it and its horrible people at all costs. Jonah didn't like Nineveh. Nineveh didn't like Jonah either, and that was just fine. Except that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. And again, in his recalcitrant manner, Jonah went. He wasn't happy about it, but this time he went. Now at the end of the first day of what should have been a three-day journey across the city, Jonah stops and delivers his message. Just five terse words in Hebrew, and certainly not loud enough for anyone to hear over the din of the city. Jonah thinks his box has been checked off, and he turns to leave. But then something happens. 
something different happens. The city falls eerily silent. They did hear the word of the Lord. They did change their ways. They did repent of their sins. And in typical Nineveh fashion, declared a fast that even the animals had to partake in just for good measure. Now, I'd like to say that this is the end of the story, but that's not quite true because it goes on. And Jonah gets really ticked off that Nineveh repented. So angry, in fact, that he wants to die. And so God reproves Jonah by saying to him, Should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? That's how that story ends. Just remember when God says all, God means all, even the Ninevites. And to achieve divine purposes, God saves and sends, not the brightest and the best, but some pretty questionable and unreliable characters like us. Which brings us to our gospel reading. Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Simon, Andrew, James, and John at the master's bidding just up and leave their nets and families and go with Jesus because he said, follow me. But is that it? Is that, just, is that the only point of the story? Well, yes and no. In this text this morning, there's an interesting word that will get used over and over again as we work our way through the Gospel of Mark. And that is immediately. Immediately they left their nets. Immediately he called them. Immediately. And you begin to get the feeling that the time is now. Now is the time because time is fulfilled. Jesus is saying, do it now. It's interesting that Jesus comes into the Markan narrative at a time of crisis. John the baptizer has been arrested by Herod Antipas. And perhaps Jesus was thinking enough was enough. It's time, time to move from preparation to action, time to stop hoping for change and start being the change, time to urge those around to adopt a new outlook on the world, time to be a part of God's mission of reaching, loving, and caring for a world caught up in the powers that be, that keep oppressing and killing. Time, it's time to go fishing. But do we want to? Do we want to respond to immediately that Jesus is inviting us in? To go in the direction that Jesus would have us go? Or are we more like Jonah, fleeing God's call outright, or dragging our feet, making half-hearted attempts at sharing God's good word, or worse, just lagging behind. And let's not forget that when people actually do listen and make a change, we're getting really ticked off when they do. At the end of the day, being a Christian is about following Jesus. Let me say that again. At the end of the day, being a Christian is about following following Jesus, a living, breathing person, and not a set of ideas and rules or dictates of behavior. Now, yes, thinking and acting accordingly is important, but as we grow, these are evolutionary, and they develop over time. What is most important in our growth as disciples of Christ and what involves, and this involves the ongoing relationship with Jesus, the ability to hear and learn something new, the ability to do something new, 
even if it means our discomfort. And I've said it many times, and I'll say it again. Now, more than ever, it is the time for the church to be at work in the world, bringing God's reconciliation and love and grace and mercy to a people who need to hear it. Not condemnation, not forcing our way of thinking upon others, not telling people how to behave. Haven't we had enough of that? I certainly have. Rather, it's time. Now is the time, now more than ever, to share the way of love that lives and walks together, calling and supporting each other as we go, lifting up the disadvantage, disadvantage and showing mercy, mercy, love, and grace toward our enemies. God's calling is surprising and unpredictable, and it leaves behind conventional wisdom. And who is it that gets called? You see, God calls all of us. He calls the Jonas and the Simons and the Andrews and the James and Johns and the Mary Magdalene's of the world. And yes, you and yes, even me. And God does this so our enemies, even the Ninevites, might be saved. Because when God says all, God means all. Follow me, says Jesus whether we do it most of the time or some of the time, we are called to live into an invitation to love God and love people, and to reach out to our neighbors, to care for all of God's beloved children. Follow me, says Jesus. We are called to lean into our baptismal covenant, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the world. Now is the time. And Jesus says, Follow me. Amen.
God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy O God. God, for skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, Especially we remember Judy Thompson, Bonnie Shackle, Terry Evers, Greg Brock, Melvin Beavers, Wanda LaRue, Jane Gerhardt, George and Martha Sink, Eleanor Gifford. Those who are fighting COVID, our frontline workers, and our first responders. And we pray for the families of Al Goober and Randy Fisher and Roger Brow, their families who mourn their loss. God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. God. For our congregation and communities, for families big and small, for the organizations that meet here during the week, including the Seventh day Adventist Church and the Red Cross Blood Mobile that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. Oh God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy O oh God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have, uh, we'll have slides on our, 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 our live feed that will show you how you can contribute to the mission and ministry here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. But you know what? We're not all about just getting the treasures there are many people here who use their time and their talents in support of the mission and ministry here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. And I just want to hold up two people who come in each week and do our counting for us, Barry Thompson and Jean Ernst, these special saints that here are giving of their time and their talents as well as their treasures. Amen. Thank you.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, Father, who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done done, on on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread bread, and and forgive us our trespasses as as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory. Glory forever and ever. Amen. Join us in our celebration hymn. the blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. sent out in mission to reflect the love of Christ by reaching out to our neighbor in need, by loving God and caring for all of God's people. Just a few reminders. Following this worship service at 11.30 a.m., Here We Stand Adult Forum continues our study on genetics, faith, and responsibility. Women's Bible study meets this Wednesday at 9.30 a.m., 
MICA study group meets on Thursday at 7 p.m. And this Saturday, Meals to Motels, our ministry of serving meals to those in the Fredericksburg area who are experiencing homelessness and food insecurity, will be <clears throat> this coming Saturday. To sign up to be a part of the delivery team. Now links to these activities are found on our Facebook page. And we'll see you here next Sunday at 10 a.m. So until then, beloved of God, go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.